What's up, y'all? I'm Reed the Fishmonger. We just caught some Wenchman snappers with Captain Will of Fort Lauderdale Offshore. We caught these guys in 1,200 feet of water. Down there, the water's a little bit colder. These fish build up some of those cold water fats, makes them a little bit sweeter and more moist than the shallow water snappers like yellowtail snapper and mangrove snapper. All right, you guys, so the first one I'm gonna cut up really quickly for you while giving instructions, and the second one, we're gonna slow it down a little bit. All right, now we're gonna slow it down for you. We're gonna pick up the fin, go behind the head at an angle, go underneath that pelvic fin, and use the tip of your knife, and you want your knife at almost 180 degree angle, and just slide on down. That way you can get that really nice, smooth line. If your knife is like this, it's gonna be a lot harder to make that initial line. What you're doing when you're wedging your knife in there is you're just resting that part of your knife on the skeleton. And once that knife is resting on the skeleton, you can use that skeleton to guide your knife and pull towards the head. In that one motion, we already got to the halfway point with no meat lost on that skeleton. And it's just because we let our knife rest on the skeleton before making our cut. Now we can use the tip of our knife at the base of the ribs. Make sure your knife is not levitating. You want the base of your knife pushing on that skeleton. You don't want your knife out here, obviously. You want your knife just like that. You don't want it like this. You want just a tip in there, knife resting on the skeleton, angled slightly up. What you just did was separated the connection the pin bones make to the ribs. Use the tip of your knife to go to the top of the spine. That way you can hit the second side without losing any meat. Now you can rest your knife right on top of those rib bones and slide down. And there you go. On most species, that would be a totally ribless fillet. On Wenchman's, that lower rib always seems to like to stay on. It's fine, we just shave it right off. This membrane is edible. You don't have to cut that out if you don't want to. If you left the membrane on, what you would wanna do is still cut that edge with that little bit of stomach on it. And now you've got a totally edible filet. If you wanted to shave it off, just go underneath it. These Wenchmans are really a just special, delicious fish. I'm partial to just about all of the South Atlantic deep water fish. Go behind the head at an angle, cutting out right there behind that pelvic fin. Put the tip of your knife right in that opening and notice how it's at almost 180 degree angle. So now we're just going to slide down and that slide is super easy with the angle of the knife. Now we're gonna rest our knife right on top of that skeleton. Tip of the knife, face of the ribs, angle it slightly up. What we just did was separated the connection the pin bones make to the ribs. Now we can hit the second side without losing any of that meat. Rest your knife right on top of those rib bones, letting the rib bones guide your knife just like we let the skeleton guide our knife. That way we leave all of the rib bones on the filet without losing any of the meat. That's a thing of beauty right there. There are no bones left in this area. We're just going to shave off a little bit of that membrane and we're good to go. Last step for these fish is ripping the head off. Now when it comes to ripping off the collars on larger fish, I'd show you how to find the floating bone, cut around it. You can check that out in my other videos. Smaller fish like this, just go opposite directions. They pop right off. And then we gutted this fish in such a way to where the collars are gonna be left attached after it's done being cleaned. Whereas on this one, you can see that the collars were detached because when we gutted it, we went all the way up underneath the lip. So there's multiple different ways to gut your fish. And if you wanna eat the collars, to be cut through or go around that pelvic fin, they're not gonna be left attached like this. And when they're left attached like this, you can make a slight incision like that, open it up, and you can put that whole thing on the grill. We did leave the scales on so the skin won't be edible. But what you would wanna do is just meat side down, get a nice char on the meat, flip it over, let it cook all the way through on the skin, and then you just eat from the top until you get down to the skin 
and that skin helped hold in all the moisture. With these heads, there's not much meat on them. There is a little bit of meat in the face and in the forehead area. So what I like to do is split them in half. Whenever I split them in half, it's never perfectly in half. They've got a hard bone right here. I choose to just go to one side of it. And once you have a nice opening, you can just, and you can typically open it right up. And there's your snapper head. So there's not much meat left on these skeletons. As you can see, they're translucent. You can see my glove from behind. If you want these guys, you can throw the whole skeleton on the grill. You can fry them up. There's still a little bit of meat left on there. I love these tail fins. They turn into potato chips when you fry them or bake them. Uh, when you grill them, they end up getting too charred. So that's that. Last step is skinning and deboning. So we're going to take our knife, get a good grip on that tail, start at a hard angle. And once your knife is wedged under there, flatten your knife out. Now that your knife is nice and flat, apply pressure down without having your knife at a hard angle as you push forward. And look at that. That's a thing of beauty. What happens if you have your knife down at a hard angle the entire way? I'll show you. So we're gonna have this one angled down all the way through. And when you do that, you just have more red on your filet. These Wenchmans are such white meat, it's actually not that bad. On a lot of snappers, the whole bottom would be red if you scrape the bottom like that. So I choose to have a flat knife instead of a downward angle knife, just so that way all of that extra red stuff could be left on the skin instead of on the meat. Once your knife is flat, I'm pushing down with my hand on the knife. And what that does, it prevents your hand from rising up as you're skinning. If you have a flat knife and you have a loose grip on it, it will rise and start cutting into the meat. So we're pushing down without having the blade angled down that way you can get super clean skin jobs like that. And if when I said skin job, you had some dirty jokes go through your head, we're probably friends. Removing the pin bones. Take your finger, find where the last pin bone is, and we're gonna go an inch past it on both sides, getting as close to those pin bone lines as we can so that way we're not wasting any of that delicious meat. Pick up the pin bone line and cut. The reason why we go an inch past the last pin bone is if you could see these lines, how they hook forward. So if you found the last pin bone and cut down straight there, you would leave some of those bottom bone fragments in because of the angle. So we go just past it to make sure that none of those bone fragments are left in the filet. Alternatively, you could use tweezers to pull them out. It's a pain in the butt. And this is, you know, part of the redder meat anyways. So no harm, no foul. You guys, that's how you fillet skin and knee bone, a Wenchman snapper. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you all have a killer day.